this morning, let us look to Matthew chapter 12, if you will. Matthew chapter 12. In the 12th chapter, Jesus had been describing the unpardonable sin to those teachers of his day in the temple, both the scribes and the Pharisees. And he talked about that sin against the Holy Spirit, the unpardonable sin. One day I'll teach that. But uh, today I want to go a little further. I want to go down here and he talked about the tree of each of us. And this kind of goes along with our Sunday school of the tree of good and evil. That will know trees by the fruit they bear. That he comes down to a, a scripture portion that deals with signs and spirits. He says in verse 38 of chapter 12. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered saying, Master, we would see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall, be no, there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the farthest parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he said, I will return into my house from where I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty swept and garnished then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of this man is worse than the first even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation Jesus was quoting from the Old Testament times, yet was speaking a message that was relevant for his time. That's important because I believe that the message that Christ has for us today is relevant for our time. Last Monday, April 15th, 2013, many people arose from their homes. A bright and sunshiny day, planning to be in a large gathering in front of a lot of people to watch an event that had gone on for many years, the Boston Marathon. They were cheering on their family members and friends as they endured that grueling 26 mile race. Some had passed the finish line. Others were in the process when suddenly out of that crowd came a loud blast and a large plume of white smoke filled the air moving upward in the sky 
tremendous blast. I saw people falling down in the streets and the crowds were parting, police officers running, emergency medical people moving toward the scene. A few seconds later, we heard another loud explosion with another plume of smoke and others were lying down on the pavement. And as we listened to the news commentators, there was a lot of fear in the air, a lot of sadness, a lot of disappointment. Suddenly, that beautiful, expectant day had turned into a nightmare for that large group of people. Immediately, there became a search that went out to find the perpetrators of this horrible disaster. And we all know the story by the end of the week. What had happened, we'll drop it right there. A couple of nights later, we hear of another great tragedy. People were in their homes. Many had just gotten in from work. They were preparing to clean up and eat. Maybe perhaps some were around the dinner table. Some were in the nursing home. Others perhaps walking the streets in the little town of West Texas. There was a fire. They'd had fires before. The emergency vehicles moved out of their position going to take care of this situation. The emergency medical vehicles were shortly following. Then there was a loud burst and explosion that leveled half the town and killed many people and destroyed many, many homes, leveled them to the ground. When they woke up that morning, they never had an idea that was going to happen. When they were at work, they never had an idea. The people at that plant probably never had an idea. The people in that nursing home never had an idea. Their children perhaps had missed visiting them that weekend. Never had an idea that they may never see them again. Thank God they got out and they were carried away. But the emergency responders, all volunteers, they got paid nothing, were wiped out in a flash, completely taken out of the world. They're having a big service out there today. Why do I say these things? Because we're living in a country where things are happening more rapidly than we would ever think possible. We're seeing men and women and boys and girls, some at the end of their life, some just beginning, being taken out in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Jesus was speaking to the religious community. Notice I said to the religious community. And he was speaking to them about the standards and morality, hopes and aspirations of the church. And from the tone of that conversation, I can somewhat gather he wasn't getting exactly where he'd like to in the conversation with them. As today there was rejection. As today there will be another day. As today, I'll come when it's more convenient. Some of the time, I'm very, very busy. Jesus, don't you know that we know what we're talking about? There are many people today darkening the interiors of churches that believe they're okay that believe that their beliefs are okay, that believe that if a disaster came, they're okay, but they're not okay. 
these people in a half mocking way spoke to our Lord and asked him show us a sign that you're really the son of man show us a sign you're the Messiah show me show me show me we live in a society the scientists are crying out loud show us all the philosophers and people on the history channels think they may have an answer they're searching in every corner under every rock behind every tree for the truth but my dear friends they can't see the forest for the very trees that they're looking at Jesus told them that these men were living in an evil and adulterous generation as I see what's on the movies I see those who are being honored I hear about what is being done I see those things that are so sinful and wicked going on when I see the horrendous acts committed by people that we've allowed to come into our country and be a part of us and yes even some who've been born and raised here when I see what has happened I must ask myself what sort of generation is it that I live in what is going on Lord I'm alarmed that people cannot see Jesus was the last alarm for that generation Jesus was the hope that the nation of Israel was looking for yet they could not see they kept looking further and further expecting something more exotic expecting someone perhaps more handsome per, perhaps richer perhaps stronger you see we're always looking for something different than what God is providing listen it isn't how Jesus looks that is important it's his shed blood it isn't that we become a church that's socially acceptable in the world it's a church that becomes biblically correct in the world we need to understand that by the very nature of being like Jesus some are not going to like us some are going to be jealous some are going to be envious and some people are just going to hate us to be hating us I need to be loving I need to be kind but I need to be vigilant and I need to be honest someone said to me but don't you understand that the problem the bombings all that because preacher don't you understand every religion in the world is working for the same thing and my answer to that is a resounding no they're not they said you would not be so narrow minded that you believe that Christianity was the only way to God I'd say yes I would Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life nobody comes to the Father but by me end of story he didn't say I'm going to heaven to prepare a place for the Buddhist the Taoist, the Shinto. Oh, preacher, you're naming them by names. They don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Islam. 
I'm just grateful to God that I don't live a religion that subscribes to the idea of killing those that disagree with us. Our open arms have made us a target. I understand that. But I sent a blog on the internet to something this week. I said, please, anybody out there understand that we Christians are loving and kind and forgiving, but we love our families. And don't mess with our families because we get just as upset as anyone. Amen? I look at this. We live in an, a generation that's occupied with evil. Young men are running around thinking of ways to kill people. Thinking about building bombs. Thinking about taking guns and shooting somebody. And by the way, are they going to make us register pressure cookers now? That's what the bombs were made out of. My poor grandma's going to have to register her pressure cooker. It isn't guns and pressure cookers that kill people. It's people that kill people. It's mental issues, yes. But it's not simply the mentally ill, it's the mentally mean people that do it too. When they found the second fella from the Boston Marathon, he didn't raise his hands and say, I'm sorry. He started shooting. When Jesus mentioned the word adultery, he wasn't speaking only of the physical adultery. He was talking about adultery of moral unfaithfulness and spiritual unfaithfulness. The adultery that tries to make it okay to say and do things that the Bible clearly teaches isn't correct. Someone said, but you're going to be in trouble, preacher, if you speak against homosexuality, then they're going to make you stop. Listen, I'm not speaking against homosexuality. I'm repeating what God said. I'm just the messenger. But some churches believe it's okay. Yeah, some people believe that smoking cocaine's okay. Immorality has become a way of life in America. We look out there, and the sad truth is, just as the writer for the Sunday school lesson said, Far too many people who name the name of Jesus and go to church every week do not look any different than the world. The world sees you every day where they meet, where they go, doing what they do, eating what they eat, being involved in what they are. These people back there we're trying to trick our Savior by saying, show us a sign. You know, I look here today in America, and I clearly see a sign. Am I the only fellow? In the last times, perilous times shall come. Do you see that? I grew up in a time when someone would never think to bring a bomb to a parade where children could play in their front yard it, it doesn't happen now where you did not have to worry about what was being taught at school you do now where you did not have to worry about perverted lifestyles and perverted minds and perverted thinking like you do now Back when I went to school, chewing gum and speaking in class got you demerits. Today it's not much short of a gun in some schools. I had a teacher approach me last week, getting out of the public system here. Used to teach here. 
Why? She doesn't feel safe. She doesn't feel safe. Isn't it a crying chain when people cannot feel safe trying to do what they're called to do to make the world a better place to live? How sad, how sad, how sad! That was a common practice in Jesus' time. Show me something. Make me some magic. They even told Peter, Hey man, you show me how you did that and I'll pay you. I'll pay you. We have people today walking down the street that name the name of Jesus that in no way believe that God is still in the miracle business. I'm here to say God is still in the miracle business. He can heal through a doctor and he can lift you up. God is God. He's just as powerful as he's always been. But we live. Say, show me something. If I go to church, show me something that makes me feel good. Show me something that'll teach me how to multiply my money a thousand fold. Show me. Show me. Show me. Give me something exotic. Don't tell me that I have to deny myself and take up a cross and follow Jesus. Let my Sunday school class be group therapy. Don't let it be Bible study. Let my Sunday school class spend 90% of their time planning socials and 10% of their time mentioning people in prayer. We've got churches that have weakened and the world knows it. There was a day when there wasn't a fault about trying to implement something in a community without first checking with the church. Now they don't care. Do you ever wonder why? Do you ever wonder why? Because when they look at the church and they look at themselves, they don't see any difference. The Word of God clearly teaches, come out from among them and be you separate, set apart. The modern generation is looking for scientific proof. Show me there's a God. Show me this. Show me that. Many churches today are abusing that precious gift God sent us to the Holy Spirit. And they want Him to be a, a magician and show Him all kind of tricks, all kind of things. Show me some magic, God. The greatest magic the Holy Spirit ever showed me was the way to Jesus. Was the way to Jesus. Another good trick He showed me was the ability to read and understand God's Word. Another trick He showed me, if I would study to show myself approved, I could show others. You see, that's what the Holy Spirit's all about. When I lost my mother and my dad, He showed me how loving He could be. When I married my wife, He showed me how happy I could be and what He could bless. When He blessed us with our children, He made me feel good. But that's not His job to make me feel good. It's His good job to teach me, guide me, and watch over me. That's His job. We don't need to distract Him. We need to let the Holy Spirit do His job. When we need a miracle... We don't need to pray down a miracle. The miracles will come. And a lot of people would not even see a miracle if it hit them right between the eyes. We are in a generation that's rejecting God now. They've made the church a social psychological institution for the healing of man. That doesn't sound much different than Buddhism 
or Hinduism. That's not what Jesus said we're to do. The Bible said the church is supposed to reach out and teach God's precepts and concepts to the to the Bible, of the Bible to the people. He says we're to reach the lost at any cost. To be a soul winning church. A director leading people to Christ. Jesus used that Old Testament illustration of the Queen of Sheba. He said she come all the way from the south to the presence of Solomon because she'd heard of his wisdom. She'd heard of what could be. I'm telling you, we need to lift Jesus up. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men to me. If they had King Solomon and his wisdom in those days, how much more do we have today? How much more do we have today than Jesus, the Son of the living God, who came to give us life and give it to us abundantly? Yes, we'll have those days when the booms go off and the clouds of smoke go up and the devil does his best. But all the devil can do is touch the body. He can never touch the soul. Glory to God. If that bomb had hit me that day, I could sing the song to Canaan's land. I'm on the way. Amen. I'm on the way. But some couldn't do that. Some of those people there would not go to heaven. And some of them were some of the best people we know of. Help us to help people not reject the light. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus said, so let your light shine that others men may see Jesus in you. We need to see Jesus. We need to see Jesus. And we need to let others see Jesus in us. I used to sing a song as a child. Hide it under a bushel, no. I'm going to let the light of Jesus shine. Then I see. Some people think they can get it to God by self-help. Self-help, nor group therapy, or any other psychological thing is going to help you find God. The only way to Jesus, and I say it to you here this morning in the church, and I say it around the world as I speak over the internet, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man, no woman, no boy, no girl comes to Jesus. I mean to the Father except through Jesus. Jesus says today to everyone, Come ye that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Jesus said, Come you that need comforted, I'll comfort you. And Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I'm going, you can be there with me. You can be there. I'm not peddling some religion that says, if you'll blow up a building, For my God, I'll send you to heaven with 70 virgins. If you'll believe my God, you'll go to heaven and have it all. Have it all! I'm here to say that 10 seconds with God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham and Jacob, and Isaac and Jesus, 10 seconds with him is better than eternity with any alternative.
And Jesus used the parable of the man who went into the house. He wanted to get himself cleaned up. I've heard, have you heard these people say, I'm giving up smoking. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to quit this. I'm going to quit that. I'm going to clean myself up. I made a New Year's resolution. Don't. The only one that's going to clean your act up is God. Otherwise, you may get it swept. But the winds are going to blow back the garbage of the world into that window in your life and fill up that empty space with worse than you had before. Let God do it. You see, eternity is not a do-it-yourself thing. You see, a relationship with God is not a do-it-yourself issue. It's not of works. It's not about anything you are. It's about Jesus in spite of who you might be. Do you want to give Him your life today? Do you want to trust Him today? Do you want to fill up the emptiness in your life and heart today with the truth that will truly set you free? It can go. It can be done. You must trust Jesus. You must give your life to Christ. Christ condemns sin, but He loves you today. He doesn't like the things we do wrong, but He loves you today. He loves you when you're right. He loves you when you're wrong. He loves you when you're weak. And He loves you when you're strong. Because it isn't about you. It's about Him. It isn't about what you can do for yourself. It's what Christ can do for you. On the Calvary cross, some 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave it, all, gave it all. He paid it all. God's Word says where there is no shedding of blood, there cannot be remission for sin. I don't care what you might think, and you might call me the bigot. You might say that I am unloving. Both things would be untrue. I'm telling you, God loves you and He has a wonderful, wonderful plan for your life if we come to Him today. I know many here today have trusted Christ already knowing, but I know many that will be viewing this across the internet are lonely, lost, without and I want you to know that God loves you I want you to know that God cares about what happens to you today I want you to know that he can help you in this time he can fill up the emptiness in your life with meaningful things he can take a spirit that might be unlovely and he can change you he can clean you like no one can. And on the whole planet, nobody can love you more than Him. Not even your mother. I want to wish all of you the very best this week. And I want to wish all of you good success as you go and reach others to come to church. And we must stay really positive and we must dig in. When the devil gets going, we grow. Amen? We grow to meet the challenge. If a city can rise up to meet that challenge, how much more should the church raise up?
to meet the challenge that we face. God bless you. Let's pray. Let's all stand. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, I pray for everyone here this morning. I pray that you'd be with the one that's lonely. I pray that you'd be with the one out there viewing that needs Jesus. I pray that you'd touch their hearts and lives today. Father, do and build this church through the ministries here and the ministry of the internet. Father, bless us. For it's in Christ's name that I pray and for his sake. Amen.